Okay, hi, I want to talk about your research paper assignment because that is something that you do need to finish for this class and in order to make sure your credit is transferable also. So let's just remind ourselves, the research paper is not a book report. It's not something that you're just gonna be gathering information and regurgitating that information. You're actually going to analyze a specific topic and you're gonna present that topic. You have an argument behind it which is on this slide here. Of course, it's not a real fight, though I do like this picture of uh, Andy Warhol and Jean-Michel Basquiat, their famous boxing pictures. Um, you have been analyzing a lot of different types of works, different narratives um, and uh, persuasions, right, an argument. So, the idea is you are going to be presenting your argument on whatever topic it is. And the paper really is something that is coming from you. It's not you're relying on resources to just present different resources. That's really not that hard to do. The idea is to put everything together um, using resources, but the main focus is on what you think about a topic. So I say here, um, pick a topic of interest. I have pretty much carte blanche on what you're going to pick with a slight caveat. I'll show you that in another, in another slide. So basically you can argue on almost any topic that there is, whatever you want to come up with. I also have a list of narrowed topics with resources if you're interested in going that way. So if you have a topic that you're really um, interested in and you want to argue your position, then go for it. But if you are like, eh, you're not really sure how you want to, you know, what you want to write about and, you know, you want to kind of, oh, there's sources are already there, so it's kind of easier for me. If you want to go that route, you can use those resources that I have. So I will provide that with you. So two different directions you can go in your topic, but you do want to make sure that your topic is narrow and it's not too too broad. I know a lot of um, beginning students, they, they think, oh, I have to really pick a broad topic because I will never be able to write about, you know, X amount of pages about this topic. But you can and you will. That's how we get better at things. If you have too broad of a topic, your paper is going to have no focus. Uh, an example I can give you is earlier this week, I had a student uh, ask me if they could write on technology. And I'm like, okay, but what exactly about technology do you want to write on? I mean, it's like a huge topic. So we have to be sure that we are narrowed. Then that's going to be your research question, your thesis statement, a narrowed thesis statement. And then your entire paper is what the answer is. So. Whoever's reading your paper, they read at the very beginning what your thesis is, and they go, okay, I know what this paper is about. And by the end of the paper, they can say, yeah, that person supported what their thesis was. They, they backed up their claim. Whether or not I agree with it or any other reader agrees with it, I can say that you have done the job of, of providing an argument. So here's a checklist that you can go through while you are completing your paper and see if you have covered everything. And here we go, more tips on writing a research paper. This is where my caveat is here saying I cannot um, have um, topics that are so beaten to death. And that would include topics like this, like abortion or gun control or legalizing pot. It's just like, it's been done so many times. Uh, if you if you Google like argumentative topics, these are the ones that come up and they, they're just so boring and rather banal. And, and actually it's, they're rather hard to argue without any large amount of emotion. And it, a lot of it just comes out proselytizing and not really showing intellectual argument. So I say, no. Don't do topics that are so generic that they've been done by basically every high school student in this country. <laughs> okay, so let's not do that. And I say here, um, 
do start to uh, look around a little bit and I'm going to show you different steps on how to go online um, for the Bergen li Library but um, you can start with Google and you can look a little bit around and see what um, hits you get. Don't rely on Google because I want to have more scholarly research than whatever you get off of Google, but it is a way for you to see what's out there and synthesize your understanding about what your topic is. And then another one, I'm just going to put it out there. You might want to try to go to the library. You can simply browse the stacks. That's what the books are called, right? They actually still have books in the library. Uh, you might find something that you would have never found online. And also, the most important thing is that uh, library libraries have librarians and they are trained to help you in research. And if you uh, are not sure if you're finding the best resources, etc., please go see a librarian. That's their job. They're there to help you. Okay, now also, like I said, you don't want to just use Google to give you all of your research. In fact, I, I really don't want to see that. I want to see scholarly articles, which I'm going to show you how to get to. All right, you are the one who are evaluating your sources. So you can basically tell if you think something is relevant or not. And there is so much out there that is rather irrelevant, right? There, There's not, you know, you can go on BuzzFeed and you'll see, you know, all of these topics being um, presented. And, and is it reliable? Come on, we know that it's not. So we really want to look for something that has thought and, and brains behind it. And I say above all, um, first of all, your paper is going to be an MLA format. I'm going to show you the link to that on the library homepage. But you want to make sure whatever you're using that you take down all this information. Or if you're using one of the scholarly databases, they usually will have an automatic citation for you. So you just want to copy and paste it. But when you're finding stuff, make sure you're saving where you're getting your information from because you don't want to lose it. If you lose it and you inappropriately cite something, you don't want to go down that route. That's like a, a form of plagiarism. So you want to be really careful. Keep track of everything that you have. All right, I'm going to show you how to get to the Bergen website.